next one is, uh, and this is a, a really, really big one. I see this all the time too. And this kind of, you know, goes back into the, the, uh, you know, Q4 in, in the Amazon, uh, groups on Facebook, you're always seeing people trying to unload inventory. Um, uh, people source too much too soon. So, um, my, my, uh, kind of way of sourcing and the way that I've, uh, try to teach people who are just starting out the way I used to source until I kind of knew what I was doing is I would do I, like little test buys. So I would go on to, um, for example, like AliExpress and I would start researching products, right? And then I'd start finding products that I like. And then I'd go to Alibaba and see how much they were so I could like figure out my profit if I actually ended up sourcing that product. But then I would just buy like whatever, like 10 units or something on AliExpress throw up a listing on Amazon and then test it. So I'd test it with PPC, with listing, you know, with my listing being optimized, all that. And a lot of people are super lazy and they don't want to build listings. And trust me, I, I, you know, I've been there. It's, uh, you know, until recently, like some of the tools that came out with well, us, one of the reasons why I built a listing lightning on sell RCO is that I can build like a super optimized listing really quickly. And it's awesome to test products. Um, so go on AliExpress if, if you can, you know, some products might not be available on AliExpress if it's super specialized or if you're not sourcing from China, of course that won't work, but you know, probably 90% of people will be able to find a comparable product, um, that you, that you want to try out. The other cool thing about that is like, say you want to iterate. So you've like, you're like, oh cool. I've got this marker pen and I love it, but, um, it'd be better if it had, you know, a magnet or whatever you could still source these pens without the magnet and test the market and then add the feature after the fact and customize it with your logo and things like that. But, um, you know, if you, if you can test in small numbers first, uh, then you can prove the concept. Then you don't end up, you know, holding the bag with like a thousand units of something you can't sell or that doesn't have good return on investment. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really big one too. Um, I, I would like to look at the flip side of that too, because the more commonly I talk to people that um, don't source enough to be successful as well. So like they would order maybe, so like ordering 10 units is something to test is one thing, but ordering 150 units when you actually need to order 300 units is a completely different thing because then you're going out of stock and you're gonna be losing your ranking right. while you're going out. So I think there's two different mindsets to go out there, you can go with the testing. Okay, I feel comfortable, like with a really small amount, and now I can order a big amount of inventory. But so many people make the mistake of just miscalculating how much inventory they need to buy on the first round to avoid going out of stock on the second round if they if they are successful launching and raking that product. Well, so like what we'll do too uh, sometimes is, is actually do two different product listings. So we'll do a, pro a testing product listing and then we'll relaunch um, with a secondary one with like a, a bigger batch of units. And then the first um, test uh, bunch of units isn't, you know, it's generic, it's not branded, um, all, you know, things like that. It's just kind of a, a test to, um, to make sure that there's demand. On the flip side, um, if you know how to do due diligence and you've been doing Amazon for a while, I, this is more of a technique if you're just starting out, maybe it's your first or second product. Um, you know, that's, that's a technique that I would suggest. If you're experienced and you, you do your due diligence, and you know you figure out all your numbers, uh, how much you know PVC is going to cost you, um, you know the demand, like uh, you know from the competitors. If you're pretty sure that you can get to those those you know page ones, uh, things like that, then uh, yeah, then you definitely want like three months worth of stock is what we usually um, launch with. Um, that's what we do now, but we're experienced, so we know that. So we'll launch with like three months worth of stock. And uh, part of the reason you want to do that is when you when you do a launch, of course you. You don't want to you don't want to ruin the uh, trajectory. As Danny was saying, like if if you're doing a launch and really you want to hit it from every angle and really push that listing hard, uh, if you run out of stock, you'll completely um, you know blast that listing. And uh, this time of year, you have to be even better because of the Chinese New Year. You 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 would have had to make sure you have all that stock um, you know planned out. So um, yeah, definitely the flip side to that um, as well. Once you kind of get your uh, get your feet wet with uh, what you're what you're doing and uh, know what you're doing on uh, sourcing.